Sailing is what cuts the mustard for me. It's quiet, it's peaceful, nobody ever threatens me. Lovely, lovely thing to do. Fantastic way to spend your final days as a cameraman. Harbour master waving at me. Uh, my name's Dylan Winter. Uh, and I am a semi-retired BBC reporter and cameraman. While I was at the BBC, uh, it was one of the beautiful things about working at the BBC is that you never really knew what was coming up next. One of the jobs that I did, I spent six months riding horses following cowboys around the Rocky Mountains. Quite frightening. I didn't like the idea that there were bears all over the place. I spent uh, another six months following a 22-man combine harvesting crew who worked their way from Texas to Canada. I spent another four months living in a van uh, while filming loggers in British Columbia. So what I would do is I would go somewhere with all my gear, rent a van, sleep in it, uh, and so when the blokes arrived for work in the morning I was there and at the end of the day I was there. Initially people are kind of a bit nervous around a camera but once you've been there for two or three days uh, they just forget your existence and your job is always to be smaller than the thing you're filming. And that really works with the sea, for me. I am so tiny compared to the sea. I worked at the BBC for quite a long time and then I was a freelancer, but what really made me want to leave was the fact that they, I found myself sitting in an office filling in other people's expenses forms and their lives seemed more exciting than mine. So I went back to uh, following weird jobs around the UK and around the world. The project and my website uh, is called Keep Turning Left. Now that came about because most people uh, sail around the UK clockwise and I decided that I would like to go anti-clockwise partly because I would be starting along the East Anglian coast which is an area I know really well. The boat that I started off with was called a, a Mirror Offshore which was designed by the Mirror newspaper as a yacht for the working man and I figured it would be a bit of an insult to uh, turn right in a socialist boat. So every time I left the harbour, I turned left and the name has stuck. Running a blog has been really interesting because as a journalist, suddenly I've got no editor. So there's nobody telling me what I can and can't put out. So I guess I do sometimes put out stuff I shouldn't put out. But if I can get a few of those people to just look at a trailer and then go and pay to watch one of my films on Vimeo, then I can charge them a dollar a time. And so that does really help to defray the costs of running a boat. I've been a sailor all my life and lived on this island. Sometimes we Brits forget that we live on an island. Felt a bit of an insult really to the island to live on it, to be a sailor and to have never gone right around it. My son was deciding that in his gap year he was going to walk the Ganges. So I thought, well, okay, I'll have a little adventure. So I bought an 18 foot boat for 2000 pounds and set off. My plan was to sail around the UK in two years, but uh, I had such a marvellous time sailing around the Thames estuary in East Anglia. I thought, well, why rush? And the boat was a pretty horrible looking boat. Uh, the Americans call them four knot ship boxes. Like living in the, in the cabin of a four seater car. It's a tiny, tiny space. But I wanted a boat that I could dump somewhere and it would be the last boat that got broken into by the local thieves. I can never remember not having a boat. I've had a boat forever. Uh, and I'd, right now, probably I've got three or four different sizes of boats to row and uh, a canoe and a stand-up paddleboard and two dinghies. 
It's bad, isn't it? Boats kind of grow on you. No, never been without a boat. Never would be. I, I will die with a boat. Hopefully not in one or out of one. third boat that I bought was uh, I got for a pound. A bloke had been watching my films, he'd got ill, he'd got diabetes and got a bit wobbly and he said uh, I'd like you to have my boat. So I thought well this is too good to be true. So I drove down to Littlehampton expecting to see the floating dead but actually it wasn't too bad and I said uh, I would like to borrow your boat for a year, uh, I'll do it up, make it seaworthy, sail it around Scotland and then at the end of the year I'll sell it and you can have half of whatever I sell it for. So that was the deal we came to. So I kept her for one year. It took me about three months to do it up. I sailed it around Scotland and then uh, sold it for eight and a half thousand pounds. So he got four and a half thousand pounds. That's the only boat I've ever, ever made a profit on. Now, having spent three years sailing in Scotland in open cockpit boats, I've decided that I need an old man's boat. Now I've got a thing called a Fisher 25. While I was working at the BBC, I did quite a lot of wildlife filming. It's a beautiful thing when you're sailing along quietly in a Scottish sea lock and suddenly you're joined by three dolphins and they follow you for quite a while. I mean, this isn't the classic over the bows shot of dolphins diving. These three were just, we were only traveling at about two miles an hour down the side of this sea lock and these t three dolphins just joined us. There was a little bit of tail slapping going on. And to have that, what felt like a direct connection with wildlife was absolutely marvelous. The other great wildlife place is Flamborough Head, which is up, up off the Yorkshire coast and the sea cliffs go two or three hundred feet high and the, and the water is 50 or 60 feet deep right underneath them. So you can sail 10 yards from these massive rock faces with thousands and thousands of gannets flying overhead. Just an absolute wildlife spectacular. The wildlife around these islands is astonishing. We are so lucky. astonishingly beautiful place. Time kind of collapses in on itself. Sometimes you'll just be staring at something or watching the wash fold over behind the boat and you'll realise that half an hour has gone and your mind has been elsewhere. Great thinking time to be at sea. I think it's a very good way, place where you can get everything aligned correctly in your head. It's good for me. I always come back a better person. That is a very satisfying thing. The pace of life is set by the physics of the weather and the sea. And there's nothing you can do with it apart from just fold to the inevitable. And I, I think that's good for a person to do that. There's something magical about the sea in that it, it absolutely, you have almost no impact on it at all. It's so big, so immense, so powerful that all you can do is literally ride the waves and the wind. And all adventures at some stage, for a journey to count as an adventure, you have to wish you weren't on it, otherwise it's just a holiday. 